The Scar of Odysseus In the old stories, on a quest for a lost grail, gold fleece, or to refound a kingdom sacked that the hearth gods may rest, a small crew leaves its natal ground and sails beyond the limits of the west. The sons and wives who stayed behind would wonder at their wandering and wait with thoughts of monsters weighing on their mind, until a ship with magical freight appears with white sails on the sea's dark rind. Such tales can hardly fail to please, for we lap up the unknown that's made known, and sense our lives, in great or small degrees, look like quests too, could they be shown in all their menaces and victories. No wonder, then, we celebrate the bliss of bride and groom at their beginning, the perilous hours that thread a narrow strait, but somehow keep the fate's spool spinning, the disembarking for a golden estate. What's more, we see a dark plot swells along the path the schoolboy walks alone, and hear behind the girl's first kiss church bells, and feel our hearts with his atone when the bond clerk comes clean on what he sells. Their lives show ours. When we behold some soldier stiffly called away to war, or hear monks pray their office in the cold chapel, we know that their forms are those our lives take when their true depths are told. But they must not be. We have seen the maniac proclaim his destiny and suffered through dull cruise slides scene on scene as some fool reeled in vanity. We cannot always say what our lives mean. Not just the humble, but the wise accept the distant idyll for its feignness, which gives to our lives' plots their just disguise. Odysseus wore a beggar's plainness so that the truth his love alone surmise.